welcome to well, your planning committee. Um, item one, uh, the minutes. Is it your wish our time and planning committee is a true and correct member? Uh, two and correct. Um, yeah. Agreed? Yes. Agreed? Right, thank you. We did have my own hand on the table. I shall tell you upon his Councillor Jonathan Cabin and Councillor Davis. Right, and I shall two and a half is to welcome Councillor Jonathan Harris, <coughs> who is a new member from Brixford who was recently elected. So welcome to the planning committee, young man, I'm sure you, you'll enjoy yourself. <laughs> 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 it won't be too long before you have some sleep this night. <laughs> right, members interest. Um, disposable interest. Any anybody? Yes, Councillor. Yeah. Uh, item two, Chairman. Um, I uh, I know the um, owner of the the business and uh, because I used to rent um, offices to it. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't anymore. Okay. So you don't socialise or anything? No, I have done. Yeah. But, when you say you have done, do you wait for meals and things like that? I have done in the past, yes. So, should he remove himself or not? How long ago? Oh, I don't know. Um, six months, 12 months. Ago. What's the legal advice? I think, um, just a few transparencies you may want to understand. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Okay. Party weapon arrangement. Oh, no. Those members of the those members of the public that haven't heard before, that means we don't get together on party lines or any other lines and decide how we're going to vote. We vote how we how we feel we're going to vote at the end of the debate. There aren't any applications withdrawn, deferred, or been determined under delegated powers. A bit of um, um, housekeeping. If the fire alarm bell, bell goes, please go through, exit through the room that you came in and the stairs that you came in. Please switch your mobile devices to silent, because if not, we take at least five pound off you for the chairman of charity. The proceedings are being recorded. Speakers will have three minutes to speak, and after that, you'll hear a tone and be asked to, in effect, wind up. That's the only opportunity you have to speak, so I'm sure you won't interrupt during the rest of the debate. And by the look of you, you're not going to clap, his cheer, boo, or and wave your arms, are you? No. Believe it or not, some people do during some of the debates. So. And you'll see officers talking at the same time that one of you is talking, which looks awfully bad manners, and trying to get an answer to the points that you're raising. And I think that's, that's all on. On that, we go straight now to the planning applications, which is, the first one is in Dalton Parish, and it's 0170. Just case, thank you, Chair. Uh, you see the site plan there, it's obviously in Dalton Parish, but it's on the edge of uh, Weedon. Um, the site might be well known to some of you, former ice campaign. Um, is effectively a brownfield, a brownfield site, and really, what this what this application is, um, it's an opportunity that's come about um, because of the history of the site. The applicants have put in their application to use it for an alternative to the one they have planned permission for and could implement tomorrow, which is to use it for housing rather than the offices which have been approved. And that is a fair take from the site showing the plan of what was approved on the site when it was approved for offices it was three separate blocks with car parking spaces etc permission was implemented because they built um, they built the entrance into the site but obviously nothing else was done and it's since become over the ground and obviously since that time as well the floor weed and bypass has now gone in and the roundabout is now at the far end of the site which you see there that's looking back towards the site what I would say to start off with is, uh, I know there's been a lot of concern that this is a go to policy, but I would remind members that when you carry out a determination in a planning application, you have to have regard to policy insofar as it relates to the proposal or its material. We have to have regard to other material considerations as well and weigh things in the balance. So what, what we've done here is we've had regard to other material considerations, which are 
things such as the history of the site, the fact it's brownfield land, and it is previously developed land, and it does have an extant planning permission to build those offices on. There's obviously in recent times been British development rights introduced where you can convert offices to residential. They won't actually apply if these offices are built because they have to be in place back in 2013. But nevertheless, you can see by analogy that the change of use of an office, empty office building to residential would be such a shocking concept, shall we say, in the countryside. So against that background, and against advice in uh, the NPPF, in particular in Chapter 11, Paragraph uh, 118 C, I think it is, where it says about taking opportunities to develop sites where you can reuse brownfield land. And it says, uh, give substantial weight to the value of using suitable brownfield land, set within settlements, but this is on the edge of the settlement to be fair. And it says for homes and other identified needs and support appropriate opportunities to remediate, despoiled, degraded, derelict, contaminated, or unstable land. Now again, as you'll see from some of the representations, we know this land has been contaminated and there are several conditions suggested to deal with it. But on balance, having regard to policy, the history of the site, the latest government's advice and views in the NPPF. We're feeling that we can't, as planning officers, really justify a reason to refuse residential development on this site in principle. And we'd far rather have it if we're going to have residential development on this site, rather than make them build the office buildings and you know, seek a planning commission to convert them to residential. We'd rather just allow them to do residential from the offset, which would probably result in a better scheme at the end of the day than trying to convert buildings to the built up offices. So, Although I think it's very controversial in some ways, that's the logic behind the conclusion we've reached and the logic behind our recommendation. So on that basis, Chairman, we are recommending approval of the application. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Um, local member have indicated they'd like to speak, so we'll go to them first, Adam Brown. Councillor Brown. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'm sorry. No, sorry. I beg your pardon. Sorry, Councillor Brown, I shouldn't have been that quick. We've got two speakers yeah. first. And uh, first of all, Mr. and uh, Mrs. Angel from Wheaton Parish Council. I do beg your pardon. I'm trying to stop you from speaking. Thank you for putting it on soon because I haven't got much stamina at the moment. Wheaton Beck Parish Council has consistently opposed this application and continues to do so. The Parish Council has some sympathy for employment related development, which will be consistent with the previous usage and complement the existing business development at Cavalry Fields. But residential development is inappropriate in this location. The DDL is a busy and popular road. Its usage will increase as Daventry expands, as will noise and air pollution, to the detriment of the health of anyone living alongside. This is ribbon development. It has no connectivity either to Dogford or, more importantly, Weedon, where day-to-day -day services are located. Families will be isolated. Weedon shops and services are a mile away and the school and doctor surgery a mile and a half crossing busy roads. Contrary to what the developer says, the footpath on the north side of, of the road is, is not suitable for pushchairs or people with a disability along its full length. What's more, the new busy DDL A45 roundabout has to be negotiated and there are no safe crossing places the locality does not look like a residential area and vehicles will not be expecting pedestrians to cross at this roundabout. Would you like to do this journey on foot with small children in the bush chair? <coughs> Would you allow an 11-year-old to walk this part of the A45 on their own to get to the bus pickup point further down the road? Families who qualify for affordable housing may well not own a car, let alone have the luxury of mum's taxi. There's no public transport from here into Weedon. In short, this is not what is meant by building sustainable communities as set out in the National Planning Policy Framework. The offer of a high percentage of affordable housing may be seductive to you as councillors, but this proposal ignores basic principles of how and where affordable housing should be planned and located. In our recently sadly rejected neighbourhood plan, Proposals for comparable housing development to the south of the A45, immediately opposite this site, were strongly objected to by both your Daventry District strategic planners and the examiner. 
This site is way beyond the village confines boundary of Weedon and completely separate from Dunford Village. It cannot be viewed as an exception site, especially as its offer of affordable housing massively exceeds any local need as demonstrated by the current Weedon Housing Needs Survey. This site is not suitable for residential development. Please refuse this application. Thank you, Mr. Armstrong. Second speaker is Mr. Back, who's the agent. Good evening, councillors. My name is Rob Back with DLP Planning here to represent uh, the applicants. Thank you for the opportunity to address you this evening. Um, I won't talk for very long. We're primarily here to answer questions should you, should you have any, and I'll be largely repeating things that your officer has already said to you. This is an outline application for residential development with all matters reserved except for access. It's a brownfield site with an extensive two, uh, consent for two storeys of offices of around 50,000 square feet. The principle of development on this site has already been established. The consented office scheme hasn't been implemented because of the dramatic changes to the market for new office space in the last 10 years. However, that extent consented scheme does create a fallback position as set out in your officer's report. As your officer has also set out, development of that consented scheme and an application for a conversion to a residential would undoubtedly create a less favourable and less attractive residential environment than the scheme that you have before you. That combined with the fact that the proposed scheme does create 40% affordable housing in line with your council's policies is a significant factor in its favour. We would certainly acknowledge some of the concerns that have been expressed by members of the parish councils and by local neighbours. And it should be noted that since this application was actually submitted in 2016, the scheme has been amended and reduced down to a maximum of 22 dwellings, uh, and the layout has been altered in order to demonstrate that that site in its linear form can be developed in an attractive format. We would also acknowledge again, as your officer has pointed out, that on first glance, if this was a greenfield site, it may be considered contrary to your policies. But again, as you've already heard tonight, there are other considerations that have to be weighed when balancing them, when coming to the planning balance and determining this application. And the material considerations that are most significant in this case is that this site already has a consent for development. You will all know the site probably better than I do. You've probably driven past it for many years. It is highly untidy. It is not a good and attractive gateway to, to either Wheaton or to Daventry. Development of this site will create a significant environmental improvement. We understand the concerns that have been expressed in relation to highway safety and footpaths. There is a footpath that runs from the sites all the way into Wheaton. It's a 10 to 15 minute walk to the, uh, to the, the Tesco Express, for example. Um, there are no objections to any statutory consultees, including from the local highway authority. Um, and your officers are recommending approval. For all those reasons, and for everything that's been set out in the reports, uh, and so far tonight, we would hire, we have asked you to look favourably on this application and approve it. If you have any questions, we'd be very pleased to answer them. Thank you, sir. It's not on the three minutes. Now, Councillor Brown, I think I've got you right this time. I do apologise. That's okay, Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, I'm here today to uh, support the Parish Council in full and um, uh, and comments. Uh, of, you know, I, I echo those sentiments entirely. Uh, I would say, Mr. Chairman, that uh, I object uh, to this develop, proposed development essentially on the grounds of its location and specifically on the grounds of the Royal Northamptonshire Joint Course Strategy Policies S10, particularly paragraph A, that stipulates that development will achieve into earlier a strong sense of place. Policy R1 which sets out that development will promote sustainable development that equally addresses economic, social and environmental issues and G, be within the existing confines of the village. Now if we look at the site uh, as it stands, this application before you, uh, it's in Dodford, it isn't really in Dodford, it's on the edge of Whedon. And I would question very seriously how anyone can argue that this would create a strong sense of place. Effectively what the committee is being asked to do is to create an isolated, transient community that's neither in Weedon nor Dodford. The, these are houses which are 75% affordable rents, I believe, and 25% shared ownership. Now, 
I have to say, Mr Chairman, that I think there's a good reason why there's no uh, sole ownership uh, market property within this development. It's because effectively anyone with an economic choice of, of, where the, of where they will live wouldn't want to live there. It is not in Weedon, it's not in Do uh, Dodford, it's isolated from any amenities. It's the other side of a busy and increasingly, bu uh, increasingly busier van belt on the Downford Development link road, link road, creating a highly dangerous journey on foot for anyone who, who wishes to reach Weedon. And as I say, effectively creating a silo community with no sense of place and no sense of community. It, it does not, in any sense, um, meet the need to be within the existing confines of the village. It's separated from the whole of Weedon, <laughs> at least by a hedgerow uh, which separates it from an, an industrial estate. It's not within the body uh, of the village. And I would specifically focus, Mr Chairman, on, on the social issues here, that we are being asked to create uh, you know, something that very much, very much looks like social, iso social isolation of people who cannot afford their own homes. You know, it is, to a large extent, taking advantage uh, you know, of, of that social need, of that social deprivation. And if we are to build on Banfield sites, they should be within the confines of a village where you can create cohesive communities you know, and, and where people can be integrated within the main body of the community. S10 paragraph K also, also suggests that we should seek to minimise pollution from noise, air and runoff. Now, I do fear that we are in danger of creating a statutory nuisance by putting houses here, where they will be subject to a massive amount of air, air pollution and a massive amount of noise pollution from a road that, as I've said, is very busy and getting increasingly busier. I honestly believe, Mr Chairman, that this development is in entirely the wrong place. If it was still the office block applications, I would probably be in support. I think that's a suitable use of Brownfield sites. But it would not be a responsible move to approve a housing settlement of that size in that location. Thank you. Before I go to Councillor Amos, I'll just ask Maria to answer one particular point that you brought up. Thank you, Chairman. Um, there is 40% affordable on the site, and of that 40%, there's a split between social rented and um, shared ownership. So it's not that the whole site is shared ownership. I just wanted to clarify that point. And probably also worth um, stating that um, with the position of NCC Highways not uh, raising an objection to this proposal, it would be just difficult to sustain a highway safety argument as any reason. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes, I am um, not wishing to repeat what Councillor Ranshaw and Councillor uh, Brown have actually said, but to actually say, um, uh, and, and we haven't conferred on this at all, which is uh, uh, fairly good. So we're coming from three different points, but I, I think that it's important to say that it is an inappropriate site. Uh, it was inappropriate in 2016 um, and has multiple um, uses. And uh, now, today, I think uh, it is even more inappropriate uh, with noise pollution and with the um, new extension of the Dantry Link Road. Uh, that road is only going to get busier to put affordable housing there, let alone other housing there. Um, the safety issues and everything else that come into play, uh, I just cannot agree with at all, and therefore I would uh, ask you to uh, look at these very, very important points, and uh, I would convince you to go for reviews of them. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, right, members. Councillor Evans, Yes, um, as uh, uh, our officer said, the, the site has a very shaken history. Um, but uh, I have, because we go against so many policy, my worry is that is the reason that we allow that site to suddenly have houses exceptional mm -hmm. enough. Uh, because when we listen and when we look at the map, it is true that offices, because we have all the industrial uh, estate on one on 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 the left, it make quite uh, it's a sensible uh, things to have offices on on uh, the right. So I can see the benefit of offices now um, for houses. Uh, I have a problem that we allow so many houses in a location that 
to me appear um, quite uh, not suitable for houses, but I would leave my uh, councillor to let me know. But um, councillor um, uh, Brown said that uh, it was against S10 and R1. Will that be valid on planning round if we decide to go against officer advice? Thank you. Thank you. Um, Keith, you want to come back on? Well, I think, I think my response is I don't think we have any evidence to be fair that we could some of what's been said. That's one concern. Really. The members have spoken so far, so it's highway safety, pollution issues, etc. We don't really have any evidence to back that up, so well, apart from people are saying it. Well, as you know, this ends up in an appeal situation. In order to avoid length of costs, you're going to have to substantiate your reasons for refusal. So, really, if that's the way you want to go, I think you ought to defer the application to come up with some evidence. Otherwise, I don't have any. But the reason we've called up um, Cherry Hill for Walgrave is just some members who are not aware. This is a, a site, it's from probably 25, 20 to 25 years ago now, but they used to put a lorry depot that might have old used to operate between Old and Walgrave. And the solution there is a really difficult problem on the Brownfield site. Before we had any of the modern pressures imposed on us from government about building more and more houses on Brownfield land, was to build 100 houses in the open countryside. But you can see from the aerial plan, and we'll come into that now, but it is totally isolated, yet it is connected to the community by a public footpath. It's actually further out from either village than this site is. So I just want to say that it's not quite as controversial as you might think it is. This council's done it before in a similar situation as a solution to a problem to deal with a brownfield site in the middle of nowhere. Um, so things that have been said are similar. Okay, that might not be quite as busy as the, as, as the main road to Eden, but nevertheless, it's just something I thought you would take into account, because I've certainly taken it into account in my planning balance and my deliberations about how it, how it complies with policy. I mean, for all intents and purposes, the policies back then, in terms of a lot of what we were looking at in building an open countryside, were very similar, you have the same policies to the ones we actually have now, really, in the same local plan. Um, but as I say, if you're going to say, it's going to cause noise, it's going to cause pollution, etc. It's going to be unacceptable. You're going to have to have some pretty robust evidence that's going to stand up to scrutiny and cross-examination, if they to be, from other expert witnesses, um, to say that that is actually something you can prove to the satisfaction of the land inspector. And I'm, I'm a bit concerned, really, that if we haven't got the evidence, we shouldn't be refusing it for those reasons. Can I come back well, to what the... Um, if it's a quick one, I'll yes. cut you down the um, of three speakers. C Councillor, uh, 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 our officer says that we could defer fair for more evidence. Do you think that might be the right way to go? I personally don't want to ask for any more information. I want you to brief the application tonight. As you say, it's been around since 2016. But all I'm saying is if that's where the committee gets to, that it's going to propose refusal on those grounds, I would urge to defer to see if you've got actually any evidence to back up. Because I'm really concerned that if you refuse it for that reason, you go to the appeal, you're looking at a cost situation if you can't substantiate it. Yes, I use the for sure. Councillor James. Thank you, Chairman. I, I know this site very well. In fact, Dunkish years ago, I used to get my petrol from there. Um, currently, this site is an eyesore, uh, as few people would disagree. Now, listen carefully to uh, Mr. Brownscroft and, and uh, Councillor Amos, Councillor Brown, and uh, I must say that it's difficult to disagree with them, uh, what they've said. Uh, and I do know that that road is getting busier. In fact, if you go a little bit further northwards to the Everton turn, it's getting increasingly difficult to get out of the turn to Everton. Uh, because so many people now are attempting to go to Wheaton by the back way of the Everton turn down Queen Street to get into Wheaton. And it's made it increasingly difficult. This site will add to the difficulties there between the round and down and Everton turn. The problem here, of course, is, is simply this. Uh, the site is Brownfield land, 
and it has got certain plan permissions. And uh, looking at it from a, a developer's point of view, ideally, could we be better uh, for housing development than, say, the alternative, which would be to carry on with the extant planning permission for B1 use, and then convert three buildings or whatever into flats, which would be most inappropriate for this site. So, you know, whilst regretting the fact that this is, as Mr. Grandstaff pointed out, ribbon development, basically, <laughs> nevertheless, uh, there would be nothing to stop this developer, uh, even if we refuse uh, this application tonight, uh, having the V1 buildings built and then converting them into residential, putting an application to convert them into residential, which would be almost impossible to resist. And I suspect if we did attempt to resist that, uh, uh, or even if we attempted to resist this one, uh, we on an appeal. We would more than likely lose that appeal. So with great reluctance, I would prefer the residential development of the 22 houses than the alternative, which I think we could very well end up with to turn the application down. Um, it does have that advantage of providing uh, affordable homes, which would be useful, would be very useful. So very reluctantly, you know, I will go to officers' advice on this one, and, and I will be, I am prepared to propose that we do go to officers' advice. Seconder, please. Councillor Longman. Yes. yes. You wish to second? Yes. I do. do you wish to speak now? Not really. I've barely said it all. Okay. Councillor Dabbs is the next one. Yeah. Um, no, sorry. Yeah, Councillor Dabbs. Yeah. That's not mine. It's me? Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay. okay. Thank you, Chairman. Um, it, it's hard to know where to begin on this. The, the, the actual report is so full of, of issues, shall we say. I mean, we've had... Um, the, the policies R10 and R1 mentioned, also S1. Um, I'll just pick out some of the, the words in the report. Uh, on page 36, the site is not considered to be in a sustainable location for housing. Uh, I know that's a bit of a summary. Um, on page 37, um, it's to do with um, R1 does allow for development outside the confines in exceptional circumstances. It is not considered that exceptional circumstances have been demonstrated. I, I think that's just a, a snapshot of the flavour of, of the report that I took. Um, I know officers have recommended approval, but I'm afraid I, I don't actually take that view. Um, and I would remind members of when we looked at the maps there, that it was only a short time ago that just down the hill there was a, a development that we were all in favour of, but we had to vote it down because it was outside, I believe, outside the uh, confines of Weaving Village, uh, and a proof, there was no proof that there was um, the need for the social housing. So it seems odd that we have to vote that down, um, and then we have to vote for this. And I think in answer to Councillor James' uh, suggestion that we may get the former development there, fine, if somebody was going to do that, wouldn't they have done that already? I don't think so. I think. I think the answer is we have to uh, refuse this one. Thank you. So if I could, could I make a proposal that we refuse? No, we've all got that. We've already got a proposal to approve. So do we have so. to vote that one? So if you don't us. like it, you, you vote that one down. If that fails, then we, we go right. for a proposal, another proposal, which could be what you're saying. Come back, Tim. Come back, Tom. Just a yes, Tim. Come back, Tom. Yeah, yeah just, to mark, just, to, just to slide out the policies put in the report. Obviously, what we're reporting to you, in, we're reporting to you in the policy section in the comments of our policy colleagues in planning policy, but they aren't the ones making the decision. Effectively, in terms of the recommendation, the development control officers are the ones making the recommendation, and we have to weigh what they say in terms of compliance with policy in the balance, as I said, with the material considerations, as do you, the planning committee, as the decision maker, out of the night. So. Just because the policy section says this isn't in accordance with policy doesn't mean you can't go against that policy. The other point is, as I've tried to allude to, and as we've mentioned, partly just while out of the site, the policies that we have in our local plan aren't really written to deal with this scenario where we're talking about redevelopment of the Brownfield site. 
may assume that a lot of these sites are greenfield sites in the open countryside, which is exactly why we told you to refuse the other one, because that was a greenfield site. This is a brownfield site with an extant planning commission, and we, as the Planning Control Officers, in formulating the recommendation have given way to that against policy. And you two can also do that, obviously, as well. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's why it reads sometimes like it's contrary to policy, because technically the policy staff have said that's their opinion. But it's like they're not the ones actually making the decision. In terms of the recommendation, we are. And it says the decision is like you are. But as I say, if you are going to go down that road, you will need some evidence to kind of back up what you say at the end of the day. Thank you, James. Uh, Councillor Weston. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm agreeing with uh, Councillor Brown on this one. It just seems, it just seems a totally wrong place to put a residential development. And I can't believe that highways haven't made an issue of this. But I, I don't think they've actually been and looked at the new road either, and that and that roundabout. It's hard enough to actually get lorries and cars around that new roundabout, let alone trying to get people. I came up there tonight, I come across it every day. You know, it, yes, it's a nice new road, but those are real pinch points and really, really busy pinch points. Cars go into that roundabout two abreast to turn in, back into that to go back to the country, with other cars going back down the other side. It is a really, really difficult place to cross. I cannot honestly believe that highways haven't taken that into account with people having to walk down that hill to try and get into anywhere into Weedon, let alone crossing the road again to get into the actual village of Weedon. That's two crossing points you've got to make down that road. It just seems mad. I would like to know how this can ever be considered to be a sustainable development. I just don't understand it. I really don't. And as for some of the what ifs and maybes, well, okay, revert to revert to the uh, revert to the planning commission that's been given for commercial use. <coughs> I think I will go along with that because it always was. Um, but to sort of say, well, we're going to convert it all into flats afterwards. So yeah, we've, we've got to have houses now. What a spurious argument that is. What if some maybe uh, speculation has nothing to do with making a decision in a planning committee? Um, and as far as our policies not being fit for purpose, well, that is our fault, but they are our policies, aren't they? If they weren't written for this, then maybe they should have been, but the fact is they're not, and that's where we, that's where we actually stand. It's outside the confines of the grid. It's not sustainable. Um, it's, it's just the wrong place to put people to live in. It's only ever going to cause grief and mayhem. We're going to end up with people having to put crossings on the new on the new bypass and everything. I know we can't use speculation and say what is, but you can see that it's a disaster right into that. Thank you. Um, I would like to know why why anyone thinks it's sustainable. Councillor Richie next. Um, I, I in, in response to that last question, the only thing I heard is that houses would look better than what is there at the moment. I've got a number of questions that were just before I would make a comment on, on, on my views on this. I mean, if I can personally take the, um, the, the, the views that we had from the planning officer just in response to the last, the last, the last intervention. Um, an issue that we've faced before is that we're often get papers that come um, and the recommendation is either to accept the application or to refuse the application. But we know that with applications there may be some that are you know, 95% um, certain that these things should be approved. There are others, there are others where it may be only 5% chance that, you know, that this is this is an application that is worth taking through. It's not, we're not looking at generally though, the things that are almost all black, are almost all white. And I wonder if the office would accept that from the comments that they've received from colleagues, this is one of these applications that, at least in the view of planning staff, is fairly borderline. As I say, I think, I think our planning policy colleagues are saying it's contrary to policy. Um, 
I don't, I don't dispute that. But as I say, I think what we're saying is, as development control officers, we have, we have to weigh that in the balance of the policy point with the issues. Thank you. If I can tell, I mean, I, I, I understand that you know you have got to make your decision and you have got to weigh things up. But from our point of view, it's important that we know that there are planning colleagues that think that this is contrary to policy. Now, there was something that was said when the, when the, when the agent spoke that suggested that the number of houses was now 22. I wonder if somebody could actually confirm how many houses we're actually talking about now. Is it 22 or 23? 22. 22. 22. That, 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 that has changed from the... The big one. The That has changed from the higher amount to yeah. the yeah. I beg your pardon. Yes, I, 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 I can't notice that. Yeah. Um, there was reference to, to the, the Whedon housing survey. Um, can the officers confirm that there was no evidence from, the, uh, you know, from that survey that there was a particular need for housing in this location? I accept that overall, um, you know, there are many people within the district who are looking for affordable housing. We need to find affordable housing. But that doesn't mean that they're actually needing to find affordable housing right on the side of the A45, a long way from the nearest settlement. Keith, is there a no, it's, it's, not, it's not submitted as an exception site. site. The affordable housing is just being provided as an offer required for any residential developments anywhere as a percentage of the development. This isn't being pursued as an exception site. So they're not saying there's a justification of this in the locality. They're just saying this will be part of our normal application so, of affordable housing. So, I mean, I, 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 most of the applications to look at. The application is here not because um, there is a need for housing that a developer is trying to, is trying to fill. The application is here because the developer sees an opportunity for developing something and selling it and making a profit. I mean, it's the way that it works. I guess so, yeah. Okay. I mean, it is an opportunity, basically. I, 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 I would say this is a windfall site, if you like. So in that sense, it's not allocated. It wasn't anticipated it would come forward. But clearly what's happened is during the, during the time, should we say that this site has been under consideration, national, national policy has changed insofar as it now, now allows limited development changes of use of offices to residential. <laughs> And at the same time, as I say, the National Planning Policy Framework has come out. And I, I equated from that, that, latest, uh, that latest one on paragraph 119C, which I said, give substantial weight to the value of using suitable, which might be the thing that's a discussion now, to be fair, Brownville land within settlements, which again we've accepted is not within the settlement, but it's on the edge of for homes and other identified needs and support appropriate opportunities to remediate, destroy, degrade, derelict, contaminated or unstable land. So I think that is, you know, that is the latest challenge since this application has come in. That's what the today NPVF says. So again, that's on the table for everyone to consider. One final question. I, I thank you for that. Um, an issue that several people have raised is the difficulty that anybody living on this site would have in getting down the road into me. And we've got to assume that there are going to be children on the site that will, that will attend school in Weedon and will need to cross the A45 at least once. Uh, well, they will cross it once, so whether they cross the bypass to have plans been made for how this would actually be done. Are we going to have a traffic light control crossing on the A45 to let people cross the road? Is are the traffic lights that are going to suggest that if the that if the pavement is on the north side of the A45, <laughs> then we have first got to cross, um, they have got to, to, to cross the bypass road just beyond the roundabout. Are there plans, you know, now that you've just built a bypass, you're not going to dig it up and put a, an underpass underneath it. Are you going to put a bridge over the top? Um, 
you know, how is that going to be done? I, I, I just don't see that you can put people there and expect them, come winter nights, to have children be up and down the week um, across a road that is as busy as that. I mean, that, uh, uh, crushing that in broad daylight with the amount of traffic that is, that is, that is around the bypass is not easy. Asking children to do that, not necessarily in full daylight, I think is totally crazy. And I, I, I do have no idea why highways have not objected to this. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so the site that a few councillors have mentioned, I think it's there, isn't it? Can you is it here somewhere? Oh, the was there. Yeah, so that, that was a greenfield site and it wasn't um, it was an in principle objection because it is a greenfield. It wasn't there. And it was well, it's not there where you've got the cursor. Do you know where it is? Um, yeah, there. It's very close to the canal. I think it's between the canal and the railway. Basically, that, that field that you just pointed out, I think, was the back of it. So if you just, yeah. if you just move, move down a bit more, <coughs> just down to the right, is where that roadway goes, and that's where that development was that we yeah. refused. Yeah. So that, that was an in principle, because um, it's, it's Greenfield, it's uh, totally sunny over the countryside, and there was no demonstrable um, community benefit that would outweigh the policy objection. So it wasn't actually about we don't need affordable housing. Um, I think the parish were, were supportive because they were welcoming that there would be bungalows, if I remember correctly. But that was an imprint that wasn't really to do with the argument. The, there was an in-principal policy objecting to it. That is a very difficult circumstance to this one. Let's, let's keep it explained. All right, Councillor Chambers, next. Thank you, Chairman. The members must be sure that they don't judge this application as though it were a greenfield site, because it isn't. And the circumstances are very different. Because it is previously developed land, different uh, national policies apply. We are encouraged, uh, <coughs> very strongly encouraged by MPPF and other policies uh, to make proper use of such land, if possible, to provide residential development. So don't compare it with other greenfield <coughs> sites, with other isolated sites. This site is previously developed land, and national policy says that you've got to find a damn good reason for not allowing residential development, and there isn't one. Uh, we've already heard that if this were to be refused, it's likely that it would win an appeal, and if it didn't, it would simply build the offices and then apply to convert them, and that commission would definitely be granted, even after appeal if necessary. All of that seems rather a, a, a waste of everybody's time, since uh, the residential development is going to happen on that site, one way or another. Then the proper and responsible thing for this committee to do is to follow up this advice and approve it. I'm going to take one, I'm going to take two, we'll have one, three more speakers, and that's it for going to the vote then. I think we've got a good chance. Councillor Irving, swear. Yes. Um, uh, Councillor and Councillor. First, uh, I think uh, I, I do believe that members have the right to, to be um, not as. Um, Councillor Schneider has his opinion, but I think we, we have the right to disagree. Um, but my, uh, when I look, and strangely enough, I do agree with uh, Councillor Schneider, it's the Grand Fit site, and that is our main uh, the position we have. Now, when we look at um, Section 106 and the sin money, that is where I think we might be able to help the community the most. So because are uh, we sure that the developer will not come back in a few months to say they don't have enough money or whatever and renegotiate the seed or the section 106? How can we make sure that doesn't happen? Which in fact would be the worst position for me. 
Mary? Um, we can't make any guarantees, yeah. uh, but SIL isn't a negotiable point. Mm -hmm. SIL is payable on all non-affordable yeah. housing, mm -hmm. according to the tariffs that have the SIL policy. So, um, you know, the SIL is, is what it is. It's, it's like a tax. Um, but there's nothing to stop any developer going back, but they would have to go to the trouble of providing the liability assessment that is then independently assessed, so there's a due process for that. Right, two more speakers, then we're going to the vote. Councillor <coughs> Frost, vote yes, yes, yes. Councillor Parker. We've, we've, uh, we've been told, um, uh, I think a few coaches tonight, that uh, in the event of this um, uh, not, and we should not be granted tonight, that all would happen is uh, that we get the offices that we would we get the offices that we've already got permission for, and that um, in, in uh, Councillor Chandler's uh, words, uh, uh, the planning commission of the houses would, uh, would definitely be granted uh, uh, afterwards, in other words, in two stages. And my question is, is that, is that really true? Can we be absolutely sure right now, with, with absolute certainty, that, that we, we, either get houses, we either get houses directly or we get houses indirectly uh, by, by, by our offices? I think the time we used earlier was once they actually physically built offices, converting them to housing would be difficult to resist, given national policy, permitted development being, uh, being a significant consideration. So, yes, it would be difficult to resist. Okay. And this would be a better solution than the approved offices being converted later. Right. Uh, Councillor Parker. Can I ask a point of more out here? <coughs> if it's a quick one. I, 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 I didn't understand that the response to that last question. I think the councillor asked, you know, is it inevitable? And the response was me like it would be difficult to resist. Can we have something a little more specific? Well, we can. Planning isn't specific. I mean, it would be subject to the vagaries of any appeal, but it is the view of officers that uh, it would be difficult to resist an application to change those offices, as demonstrated on there, to convert them to housing, given that most office conversions like that are permitted development, that is your starting point, this is already development. And what we've got in front of us today is a better solution than offices converted into housing, which would, would likely... Yeah, I was going to say, I think from what I know a bit, I mean, our solicitor can correct me if I'm wrong, but what we're talking about here is what we call a fallback position about what might happen, what could happen. Now, my understanding is it only has to be likely that it could happen. It doesn't have to be absolutely certain for you to have regard to it. So I think, based on what we've said, it's very likely that that is what could happen. So that's what we're saying. We have to have regard to that, basically. Thank you. And the last speaker before we go to the vote is Councillor Parker. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I think I'm with uh, Councillor Whitley on this. I, I still struggle with this, even though I understand the extent that's been awarded in the policy things like that. But when you read the report, there's too many opposites and Council of referred to some of them. But you know, S1, the site is not considered to be a sustainable location for housing. It is not considered the exceptional circumstances that have been demonstrated. The site lies considerably outside the confines of both Weed and Bed and Dodford. Due to concerns about the location, the proposed development is not considered that the aims of the chapter will be met. That's healthy and safe to communities. The aforementioned, sorry, the aforementioned concerns about the location of the proposed development relative to Weed and Dublin means that it's not considered the aims of the chapter will be met. That's sustainable transport. And it also gains against part the new emerging part two local plan. So I'm struggling with it because of all the items where the officer of said goes against policies. But I hear what the Keith's saying about sometimes you've got to weigh those up. But the MPPF, if I've got that right, on Brownfield sites, it said if it's possible, well everything's possible, it's whether you want it there. So it doesn't mean it would happen. Also, the location, that's a bypass. And all the discussions that have been taking place recently about air pollution and things like that on people's well-being, that's next to a, a bypass. And we're going to put people deliberately next there to that bypass. I can totally understand if it was offices. I get that completely. And I would vote for that without any problem at all. But I just don't think this is sustainable. It's, it's isolated. That is isolated, that location. 
Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Right, we have a proposal that application be approved, which has been seconded. All those in favour, please show. One, two, three. Those against? Right, that is lost. Then. That proposal is lost. Now, somebody said they wanted to make an amendment. Councillor Dams, that was you, wasn't it? Yeah, what do we want? Reasons reason for refusal? Um, if you're proposing refusal, oh, we're proposing we need reasons, yes. And uh, well, well, let's just pick a few out to contribute. Uh, this is the uh, uh, WNJCS, contrary to uh, S1, R1, R10. Probably lots of, of other things, but uh, as uh, Councillor Parker pointed out, and as I pointed out. Right, do you have a second? Mm -hmm. Okay, Councillor. Yes, Councillor Ridge is second. Right, uh, sorry, Chairman, it needs to be far more specific yeah. than that. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is going to be, this is, if this case is going to be, be like, um, <laughs> this is going to be subject to scrutiny and just sign this contract to our one or no, whatever. He's going to have to say that. Exactly you're going to have to have some evidence to back up what you've said, but you're also going to have to sign, you have regard to the material considerations, which you clearly have had, and they don't have way. The policy harm that's going to be caused, and you've got to set out why the contract also in one which needs more detail. And yeah, exactly as Maria says, there's no statutory constancy objections to the back of the room. Um, so, I'm sorry, but we've got it in the verdict, so we've got to try get some. Councillor Rizzi, do you want to? Make well, some more specific reasons. <laughs> I, 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 I was going to make a proposal. Um, the, the, I mean, the officer has told us that many of the um, well, we planning proposed. No, 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 no that, many, that many of the planning uh, colleagues take the view, take the view that this application. It's a different uh, department. You know that. It's not the same department. Probably. I know. It just bears the same name. Yeah, but, I'm saying, but, but, but I'm saying, but I'm saying that as the as, as, as the raw professionals who take you know who take a view that this application is outside policy, um, I would be grateful if the if, if there was anybody here who can give a little bit more explanation about why these professionals thought that this application. Uh, it was like the same policy. Um, we'll ask the question. I think, well, I think basically you, you've cited some facts that are true, basically. You've said it's outside, but it's compromised. It's isolated. Um, so you've said that. You've also said it's not sustainable location. Presumably that's the same thing. Somebody said, I think it was the like, parish council, there's no, there's no transport concerned about walking, etc. Things that worry me are things like being signed about people are going to suffer from pollution and uh, stuff like that. And we've got, we've got no reports to back up that that's going to be a difficult one to argue with. How are we going to have reports? But yeah. we didn't know about this. Well, this, is what I'm saying. This, is, this is what I'm saying, really. My preferred option is that you type, you've said you're not prepared to approve it. That we defer the application tonight and we go back, we go back to get some further information from the applicant. On this particular point, but if you're never going to approve it, um, I'm just concerned that what, what it's going to be based on, so it's just going to have to be something like it's outside the confines of the village, it's not a sustainable location, and as far as the planning committee is concerned, all the stuff that we've put in about the fallback position, etc., doesn't outweigh the harm that you think it causes uh, by being allowed there because it's not a sustainable location, so it's not effectively. But, I, I can't, can't really write something that's going to stand up to scrutiny and need a public inquiry on the hoof of the planning committee. Uh, Councillor Evans, Yes, um, the, the main reason is we all think it's a brown site. So we are all aware that it's not a green field, it's not a green uh, site. So can we say in our reason for refusing having listened to and noting that it's a brown side, in balance, we, despite being a brown side, so we, we said it in our reason for refusal, we come to the conclusion that it's still not sustainable for her and see how it goes, because that will give officer I was going to say, I think, I think looking at the paragraph in the MPBF, it does say suitable for yeah. all that. And it also yeah. says within settlements, so that's probably what is obviously going to be raised if it goes yeah, to appeal. Exactly. Why is it unsuitable? Well, you, you 
can agree that it's not within the settlement, so that's one of the points there. And then you've got to decide what's suitable, and these are the points you, you put the same, basically. Mm -hmm. That it's isolated, it's too far from the village, yeah. people, you know, that's what, what's going to happen to go into it, really, for the second bit, because those are the points that's been raised. But, as I say, I am a bit concerned if we start going down the technical stuff without technical um, reports, should we say, and expertise, like I said. So could we maybe, if uh, Councillor Dad is uh, agreeable, that we defer because we need more evidence? Chairman, I can't can make a point. That if, like I suggest, that if it's dangerous to live there, which it manifestly is, then it's unsuitable to build there. It's not very... Really so, where is the evidence that it's dangerous yeah. to live there? Yeah. Yeah. With NCC Highways not offering any objection or, or even saying um, to put a crossing in there as part of this outline application, that, that would be very difficult to defend. We haven't got any objection by environmental health officers no. either on, on no. the air quality or anything like that. No. So what we're saying is, where, where, how are you going to balance yeah. it in the bill situation? What evidence have you got? This is what the barristers are going to ask the council witness, and we know the answer. You're making the assumption that if an appeals officer will go there and say that's a really good place to build houses, I don't think that they would. The appeals officer won't, won't do that, I'm afraid. He'll do a lot of questioning. Yeah. Um, right, we've got some proposal, the application will be refused, but we've got some suggested reasons why, that you could use rather than the ones you suggested. The ones you've been talking about. Do you want to do that, or do you want to get rid of that proposal, withdraw it, uh, and, and think that make another one? So which do you want to do? Chair, can I just ask a question? I think, I think the, the proposal actually outlines the, the policy areas. So it's stating the policy areas, but being more specific, which are the items that the council have put forward. So it is like a sustainability outside of village confines and by the other ones. And I think we should put forward as many as we can come up with. Well, the officer did, did use the words that you could use. He put forward the words that you've been using rather than the words that the proposer yeah. proposed. Well, I'll be happy with that. Now, yeah. if, if the proposer used those words, it, it, it could be a proposal that goes through. If, if not, you, you, you've got to defer it, propose to defer it for a particular well, reason. Do you use those words? You do. And your second, I think, is the yeah. same. I mean, basically... The words again, Keith. What, 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 what I can't argue with is it's outside the compound of the village and it's isolated in that sense. And obviously, from that point of view, you say it's not a sustainable location. So mm -hmm. that's the kind of gist of it. That's a debatable point. But as I say, we start going down any other road where there's no technical expertise to argue their technical points. That's what I'm concerned about. So and similarly, on the policy arguments, I think explain what to you that there isn't a policy that covers this particular scenario, so the policy has yeah. less weight in this scenario than others, so that's why I keep but I, think, I think they also think we have to put in the reason for it being confused is you have had regard, as I mean, asked yeah. to, to the other material considerations, yeah. but they don't know why. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. Is, yeah, I think that is a very good Because obviously, okay. the history is the history, what we've said is what we've said. We're going to have to sign that. If it goes to the appeal, we're going to have to sign that. We're recommending it for approval. We're OK with that. Members disagreed. Um, okay, at least you've done that exercise in balance yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I'm happy with that. Yeah. I feel that to me, an exceptionally strong argument for me is the difficulty of people actually walking from the site to do any of the facilities. If children want a place to play, they have got major roads to cross. Now, I know that the Highways Authority have not actually said anything, but are we not right in saying that we can still use that as a reason, one yeah. of the reasons for saying that this is not, this is not a good place to build, I'll use even, even if the Highways Authority has not commented? I think we can use the distance at yeah. the top of road, because again, that is a factual yeah. thing that an yeah. inspector can go and look at and yeah. take a view on. Yeah. Now, to be fair, I've known as win appeals on highway plans where highways haven't objected because the inspector has done a site visit and the inspector has said, notwithstanding the fact that highways didn't object, yeah. I find, whatever. So I'm more relaxed about that because 
lots of physical things, yes. but the inspector can go and look at, he can go and look at the distance, he can look at the traffic situation, etc. And he can share this, sorry, can take a view on that. So I'm happy to put that in as well, including the isolation distance uh, and problems with walking and crossing roads uh, back to the village. I'll put, I'm happy to go with that. Something you can say. Okay. Um, I think we wish to vote now, Councillor Logan. But uh, Chairman, because the officer will have to defend, so let the officer decide what is the best for them to defend and win. Well, to be fair, when it's obviously a committee overturning, it doesn't need to come from members, but I just need to advise you why I think we can can't defend if you like. Yeah. Uh, but as I say, the thing that worries me is if you start getting too technical and there's no strategy for the experts who are in these technical fields, evidence to back up what you say, that's into cost the territory. Well, why have you got to support this? Well, we haven't got any well in that case, then that's unreasonable of you to be hyped in that way. And if you do that, yeah. you could win the appeal and lose but the you can say, But you can say it's a quarter of a mile from weekend, and nobody can argue with that. Yeah. As a rough idea, um, councillors, if they overturn an officer's recommendation, they very rarely win. In my 32 years, I have overturned quite a few, and I have won three in 32 years. Uh, so uh, that shows you that shows you the likelihood. I'm not suggesting you're wrong for doing it, because by all means, I used to do the same when I was a member of the committee. But uh, I'm afraid officers will win 99% of them. Anyway. Through you, Chairman, I'm due to go to point out that it's a major application. Yeah. So on the figures that I send you every month, that is a potential. Yeah. And you know that if we lose a five application, you lose your right as a bank entity to um, work it. It gets done for you. Okay, the proposed application is refused for the given reasons. All those in favour, please show. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those against? Three. Uh, the application is refused for the given reasons. So we're trying to get some heat out of it because it seems to have gone cold. Okay. The next application is in Hackington and it's uh, 0102.
Um, so really, the, the issues are as set out in the report, really. Um, do we allow expansion of sites in urban countryside like this? Well, again, the policy's moved on since the days of EM16, which is now something like 20 odd years old. Um, and now government policy is to say, well, yes, if somebody's there, normally an urban countryside location, they should come be allowed to add on further facilities and further there. There's a plaster building, which is pretty similar to the honest buildings that are already there. So I wish the impact we're happy. Um, and as I policy wise, I think we're okay on that. Really, it complies with the to date policies rather than old ones from the very old local flat. And um, also, as I say, on the highway situation, the extra increase in traffic from the building going through the junction is, is not that great. Um, and on that basis, we don't think it has a highway impact, so it's recommended to approve it. Thank you. Thank you. We have another local member there, so I can answer your comments. Speaker. No, no, we don't have a speaker anymore. The speaker, sorry, I forgot to tell you. Yeah, it was going to be the agent. The speaker is not coming tonight. It was, it was, it was going to be the agent. Yeah, so we don't have a speaker. So, members. Uh, Councillor Oxford. I know it's quite big, but uh, I would go with officer advice on that one. Thank you, Councillor Oxford. Do you have a seconder? Yes, Councillor James. Uh, prepared to second it, particularly with the right boxes in the application. Thank you. Well, this is going to be a quick one compared with last time. We have a proposal that the application be approved as per officer's advice. All those in favour? Please show. That's everybody, I think. That's no. 10, no. Those against? The next one is in Gildra, zero three zero one. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah. The site in the centre of uh, Gillsborough used to be a former doctor's surgery. Um, it got changed to used to be a village shop. And it had offices of it. And this is now a proposal to put some residential accommodation on the ground floor and on the first floor. But also to get the village shop, um, which I'm sure we're all uh, partners of here. Um, sorry, I think. I got that slightly wrong. You know, there's no actual residential accommodation on the ground floor, it's all on the first floor. So the main external alteration is going to be uh, a staircase going up on the outside. It is an enclosed staircase and it does have a door on it, um, a self closing door. In the lab records, the neighbour has written in to say now all that I've got on the side of the door is to say. I don't actually have a concern, although you've said I've got three obscure closed windows, I actually only have two, but I'm happy enough with it. Um, so despite the comments of the Parish Council, which finally ended with was reluctant to objection to the revised plan, I think all the points they've raised have really been covered, to be honest. Um, and in terms of parking, well, it is what it is. The only thing we thought about looking at the photos was whether we should probably add a condition or just to say we wanted to actually be marked out, because at the moment, if you see on the photos, it's just like a tarmac area that doesn't, uh, doesn't really happen and it says there it's not a line but the reality is physically there's nothing there. I think the idea is that the parking <coughs> value for the flats will kind of be shared in terms of well when the people in the flats they'll be out when the shops open and the vice versa when the shops close they'll be home sort of things so there's a bit of a to and fro on that. But um, I think we thought it would make more efficient use of the space if we asked them to mark it out. So you get more cars parking. Subject to that, Chairman, recommended approval. Thank you. We have a speaker, Mr. Sutherland K. Who's against it? Thank you, Chairman. Yes, Jeff Sutherland K. My wife and I are the owner occupiers of Reed Cottage High Street, Gillsborough, immediately next door to the shop. Um, we don't have, we're, we're neither for nor against the proposal. Uh, we don't object to the principle of the change of use from offices to flats. And uh, as Keith's already said, our objections, our detailed objections to the original proposals, have largely been resolved by the revised plans and the verbal assurances that we've had from the owner of Seaton Stores. Uh, I should say that we get on well with the owner of Seaton Stores. 
So my point is that if the recommendations, the conditions that are recommended by the planning officer are made part of any approval, then we will be reasonably satisfied. And that is it. Take any questions. Thank you, sir. Uh, the local member is myself, and uh, I don't have a problem with it either. So to get things moving, I will propose that it be approved. Do we have a second? Councillor Irving Smith was first, I think. Uh, can we add uh, the conditions? Yeah, uh, the, the conditions yeah. will be as yeah. per the yeah. office. I'm, I'm saying we really should have one yeah. on yes. We want the actual. Do you wish to speak nice otherwise? No. If we add what uh, Keith first did say, okay. does anybody else wish to speak? Councillor Dabbs. Yeah, it's a, it's a query really on the uh, the car parking. Uh, I noticed that um, I think there was going to be no restrictions on the parking, no allocated parking to, to residents and so on. And I'm not sure whether that's actually um, quite good because my, my, what my concern is that if you're resident in the flat and you can't park. Um, outside it because it's full because the shop's open you park on the street and then maybe you park on the street for hours on end whereas people visiting the shop typically would be going for a short period they'll be in and out um, and therefore yeah. if they have to park on the street it's a short-term hazard rather than you know the whole of the weekend or all overnight so, uh, I don't, know, I don't know whether it is worthwhile having allocated spaces or a time restriction but not for residents, that sort of thing. I think certainly having the marked spaces is a good idea, but I, I just wonder whether anything additional should go in. We have talked about having marked spaces, but probably the fact that um, the shop will presumably be open at different times to when the flats may be being accessed. Might might be a better way of resolving it rather than having marked spaces saying um, flat two. No, when you say when I say marked spaces, are basically lines. Oh, no, when you lines, say yeah. this is such and such is parking space. Yes. I think having the lines, yeah, great idea. Yeah, that should, be. But should there be some other restrictions yeah, well, or requirements? Yeah, we talked about. This. We, we talked about. We decided that we are taking a bit of a risk that I'll be able to straight back <coughs> from time to time, possibly. But it's. So something I think we have to accept with flats <coughs> in, in villages um, and reuses of buildings in villages. But I mean, there's, there are spaces there, so it's not a case that there's no spaces, but it's <coughs> probably going to be a first come, first serve places. And it might well be that um, I suppose the person in the flat might wait around a little bit until somebody goes from the shop and then nips in against their parking space if that's what <coughs> But I think we thought that wasn't untypical in the village um, situation. But we talked about the ones at the chairman's briefing where we had a similar one several years ago, where we had a conversion for a flat in West Ham with no parking space in the games. I think that if you wanted to use the buildings and flats, um, that, that was a risk you were prepared to take. So otherwise, you don't get a reuse of the building and it just stands there and Okay. Well, we have a proposal the application be approved, which has been seconded. All those in favour, please show. Um, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Thank you. The application is approved. The next application is in Welford, and it's 0391. Thank you, Chairman. The application sites are situated in the countryside in the southwest of Welford Village and is accessed off the private road called Kempo Drive. Kempo Drive, whilst being a private road, has had the Jurassic Way footpath which runs alongside the drive and there is a network of private roads which are also nearby the site. The site itself is a complex of former farm buildings with various business uses on the site, including a child's day nursery and other B1 and B8 pieces as well. If we look at the photograph, we see that in fact this proposal is partly retrospective. Um, the scope of the application involves the removal of a 16 metre length of hedgerow, creation of a new point of vehicle access, change the use of part of former agricultural land to provide um, a customer parking area, and also the provision or replacement to hedgerow planting across the existing access itself. You see from the report that the Wellfoot neighbourhood plan does seek to retain existing businesses and this 
businesses been prompted by the overwhelming support for encouraging more businesses that came out the questionnaire survey. You'll also see from the report that development plan policies alongside the NPPS also encourage the growth and expansion of all types of business in rural areas, including the development and diversification of agricultural land as well. In terms of principle, often consider that the development is acceptable. However, we have to have that regard to other considerations in terms of highway impact on the landscape and also the economic considerations. In the report, the highways officer has, has not raised any concerns regarding the proposal. And in fact, part of the motivation for the works was the desire to improve the public and highway safety and to allow the daycare nursery to be accessed on the pedestrian without having to cross the open traffic itself. And this proposal certainly ensured that. In terms of impact on the visual aspect, I must report to members the very, very late representations received from our conservation officer, who has confirmed that the hedgerow is not of sufficient historic significance. And whilst there may be some loss of habitats, this will be compensated by the replacement hedgerow. And in terms of impact on the visual landscape, this impact will be very limited in terms of impact on special landscape area and the wider landscape, as there will be no significant views of the car park area or the drive unless you're until you're in immediate close proximity to the site. In terms of economic considerations, clearly the proposal will seek to help to to uh, encourage further development of this particular site and to help to sustain the businesses which are already there. So in conclusion, officers consider the post works would rationalise access, the parking, the internal pedestrian routes for this established business park and then bring them back public safety benefits and supporting the economy. And whilst there is some harm rising from the length of Pedro that should be removed, this will be compensated by the replacement of Pedro. And furthermore, the children walking between the side, currently walking across the access, will now, will now be able to be, have a safe pedestrian access to the site. In terms of the visual impact, it's considered acceptable. So overall, I recommend this application be approved. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, if I can just. Um, how I've, I've put this up on Google Earth because um, it's a very long and private drive that leads to this actual site. So I can't zoom in on it, but I thought um, it's an unusual location mm -hmm. that I thought you should be aware of. So the, the road is up to here, the private the drive starts all the way up here, and that is the application site. Yeah. Okay, we have two speakers. First of all, Miss uh, May, who's the agent? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to take this opportunity to uh, support the case officer's recommendations for approval. The site is an existing business site that's been continued to allow local and rural businesses to grow and thrive for over 15 years. <coughs> the site is now at a point where, without additional parking spaces, the demands are not met as the business on site now become more customer led. The on site nursery is increasing the amount of children it gets. And those have increased in the time that they have been dropped off. They are now having a school facility, uh, which means that more children are now coming between 3 and 4 o'clock. The proposal includes closing off the existing site access uh, to allow a safe pedestrian route towards the nursery, uh, which I don't know if you can uh, but the new hedgerow, which goes to start with complete pedestrian nights, will allow uh, young children to safely walk from the car park to the nursery site. Um, a section of hedge has been removed by the applicant. Um, he misinterpreted uh, the rulings on hedgerows, um, so it wasn't his intent to do anything for the law of that permission. Uh, but that section of hedgerow will be replaced at the new access. Um, so I'll just say thank you. Thank you. Um, can I also make a slight apology? Normally uh, we have the person who's against speaking first and the agent second. Um, none of us noticed that it's been printed the wrong way around. And so my apologies to the agent and my apologies uh, to the um, uh, Mr. Wayne who's against. We are sorry it's the wrong way around, but uh, I'm sure it'll work out all right. Mr. Wayne. <coughs> I'm 
I'm, I'm more than content if at the end of my, me speaking, the agent wishes to come back on any particular point. I'm more than happy for that to happen, Chair. Um, I, I think we'll allow that. Uh, so if Mr. Wayne knows anything that you're not happy with or wish to say, because you would normally go second, you may uh, you may do so, okay? Thank you. You didn't use your time anyway. Thank you, Chairman and Councillor. So, I'm going to act here for a number of local residents. We need to appreciate that what is known as an existing car park did not have planning permission in 2004, but it was constructed in 2008 and not in 2005 as planned. This was extended without planning permission in 2018 and part of the boundary head was removed without consent. Before you, Chairman, the owner of the land now submits that there is a need for not just the original unauthorised parking area, but one for an increase from 11 to 40 spaces, a very significant increase. First question before you, Chairman, is why? And the second, what impact? The agent says this is for the day nursery and other commercial users of the site. This is disputed. The nursery was committed in 2004, together with the change of use of other agricultural buildings, and they've operated since then with, without adequate car parking, and what the chairman is a larger site with ample associated permitted car parking closely related to the various permitted uses, including the day nursery. So either the permitted uses have expanded their workforce, or there are other uses on the site which may not have planning permission, but that's not a matter before you tonight. What the most recent permission was granted for, an extension to the nearby agricultural building for use by EES Aviation. No additional car parking was applied for. The application noted the need for four car parking spaces and the additional staff, of three full-time to five part-time, which could be met by the existing parking area. Chairman, the why argument just doesn't stand up to any reasonable scrutiny, both from the car parking and for the new access. And why doesn't it stand up? In the application before you, I would have expected a breakdown of staffing for each permitted use and a clear case for a need for an increased car parking area based on those facts. There is no such breakdown. Your officers have not set out any numerical reason for the expansion, relying on, quote, help to support the growth of these businesses. What growth? What evidence is submitted to show future growth? I'm expected that all the buildings are occupied. There isn't any evidence. What evidence there is to show any current requirements by existing business, there isn't any. The whole car park area and the new access changes the visual character of this part of this area of the special landscape along Hamplow Drive, which is part of the Jurassic Way. However, you're asked by your officers to agree the economic benefit to the businesses offset any adverse visual impact without providing you with any evidence to show any economic benefit. We say the adverse impact recognized by your officers is significant on visual grounds and is the correct approach. Chairman, in conclusion, this use does not pass the Y test and is so doing fails your officers' adverse impact balancing test and should be refused as contrary to policy R2 and E1 of the JCS and W10 of the Welford Neighbourhood Plan. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Larry. So, Ms. Lady, may you come yes. back? And um, so, a couple of points to raise. Um, the car park that was discussed that they're saying wasn't existing, um, it, um, it has come to light that it wasn't um, permitted with the 2004 commission. However, evidence by Mr. Bakewell, one of the neighbours of uh, the applicant, brought to light a contract which was uh, brought. Um, to the case officer um, that showed that it was put, implemented in 2007. So therefore, the um, the existing, as we're referring to it, car park has been there for over 10 years and therefore uh, not subject to enforcement action. Um, the businesses on the site have increased in the last 15 years since the consent was granted. Yes, Granite uh, is one of the biggest uh, businesses on the site now, which has become more of a customer-led uh, business. So even though the amount of employees hasn't increased ex exponentially. The amount of customers coming to the site to visit the site to buy products, as well as the ES Kitchen site, um, have increased as well. Um, as I said before, the, uh, the childcare facility, that's increased the amount of uh, children it provides services for, for the local people in Worthford and the wider area. Um, so therefore, the applicant thought to you know, keep the, the businesses expanding in the same site that you needed the additional car parking space. Um, it was discussed with the uh, case officer that she thought that the, uh, the replacement of the hedge across the new access, sorry, the 
um, existing access um, would make sense as a uh, mitigation strategy as it was deemed that the hedgerow wasn't ancient and wasn't didn't have any special importance over the biodiversity. So putting the new hedgerow in would kind of mitigate. Thank you, and uh, I apologise for getting you two the wrong way around, but it worked out all right in the end. Uh, local member, Councillor Irving Swift. Yes, um, with your permission, uh, the um, parish could not come tonight, but has asked me to read what they and said. I said you could do this. Yes. yes, so and, uh, they could not do because of uh, holiday times and no one was there. So. The Parish Council would like to request a deferment of this application until all those issues have been fully investigated and addressed, as only some of the breaches are covered in this retrospective planning application. Specifically, the Parish Council is aware of the following planning breaches at the site. Removal of important extra contrary to the 19, 1997 extra regulation, both alongside Ample Drive and in the left in the field addressing to the site, both of which were reported to Rachel Wood as a BBC planning department. External storage of granite slab on the existing car park area of Fies Granite. Contrary to condition five of planning application DA 2004 1106. This has been reported to Adam Card in the DD, at the DDC planning department. Erection of additional building without planning permission on the existing car park area by Yes Granite, which is used for the cutting of granite slabs. This has been reported to Adam Card at the DCC, DDC planning department. Laying of arco surfaces at the site to extend the car park prior to obtaining planning permission. Construction of an agricultural building over a bridleway recording in the Northampton Church definitive map as reported to Nick Wedgborough, area two right of way officer to the parish council and, subs and subsequently modified to notify the DDC planning department. The arm to the open countryside of all this unauthorized development is plain to see and is not one that is contemplated in any policy in either the John Core strategy or the Welford Neighborhood Plan. The parish council is also disappointed that in the planning committee report for the last application for change of use of the site, DA 2019-0030, that under highway safety, the report states that there is sufficient access and parking available on the site. The proposal, therefore, accords, accords with safe policy GN 2 B and C. If this was not the case, as implied by this retrospective planning application to increase access and extend the car park area, then the previous application should not necessarily have been approved. So I think that is the extent of what the parish wanted to say. Thank you. Now, as a uh, ward member, as you can see on your uh, planning uh, on, on the map, it is a very isolated site, so and all isolated sites suffer for the same things. People carry on their little thing till it arrives to somebody reported and goes beyond what people thought was going to be built. Uh, the nursery, uh, to my knowledge, is quite a successful little nursery, uh, roughly 50 people. Uh, it is true and uh, uh, clear as um, uh, when I called, um, said that one of the buildings has been built on the right of way. So, and that, it's a, a thing that is not there today, but that site has been developed bit by bit. And what I think the, the, um, the, uh, the village of Whiteford do not disagree that the parking has to be in an orderly way. 
but going from 12 places which never been allowed to 40 is a bit of step too far and it will increase the brown countryside. So basically, uh, here again, we have, as you see, it's, it's open countryside and they want to extend the area of the parking. So if it's possible, um, could we, I don't know if that is possible, but I will ask the officer. I would like three things, that the parking, um, if there is no business, that it's, it's a, uh, a temporary or it is a, a parking that is associated with the business, but not of 40 places because as um, uh, the agent said, that there is no uh, argument for 40 places. It could be 50, it could be 60. Um, and we have roughly 50 people, 50 pupils in the school with 12 uh, member of staff. So we don't need 50 and all the others. Um, didn't suddenly uh, require so so many at one go. But also, um, a lot of parking now have the sort of grass area. Is that possible that we put a condition if the parking is um, extended, it be extended on non-concrete material, but on the septic surface that it can be removed so it's not a brown side? if that makes sense. And finally, um, the uh, parish is very concerned, according to them, and I had some picture, that overnight you have uh, uh, some uh, uh, trucks that stay. Uh, it has a lot of overnight storage, and I have picture showing um, the um, parking being used as a storage for granite. And so that if it's a parking, it's just a parking, and it should not be used for storage. And so I think with that, the smaller, if we could reduce uh, by half the parking and make a condition that uh, it's not a brown field side, but it's still green, and with the special new, I think that would be agreeable for everybody. Quickly back on that one of those points. First of all, the application before you is what the developers are asking you to consider tonight, not a, a, a revised version. Mm -hmm. So members have to consider what's before them now. Obviously, yourself refer to there being 50 children mm -hmm. at the contender the nursery and there are 40 spaces. Um, because of the location, inevitably, majority of those children, even if they car share, will be coming by car. Um, and obviously, not in addition to those 50 children, there are other businesses on site. Um, the agent has referred to um, a higher number of people being more coming to the site because the business are now more customer-led. Um, and I understand that if obviously you're buying the grounds or you know, the kitchen, you'd probably want to come up to the showrooms and see samples of those materials before you decide to purchase them. Even if you're available to view them online, most people would prefer to come to the site so they can view those. So in addition to the nursery, there are the other businesses which, you know, which will come to the site, the businesses which come to the site as well. Um, in officer's view, and you've heard from from me that the conservation minister gave us a very, very late representation that in her view this isn't a historic hedge um, no. and that the impact of the special landscape area and the wider landscape would be very limited in their view. So you know, there are a number of similar points you have asked me to address. But can so in that case, if I cannot make a new point of proposal, I think in front of us, the nursery has never in, 20, in 15 years asked for more. The nursery is not asking for more space. Uh, last, in, in 2019, we, have, we agreed for um, uh, the spraying booths for uh, aviation, and they just asked for four spaces. So we have no justification whatsoever why they need 40 places. And as soon as it is put down, it will be a brownfield site, so they can do something else. What I don't like, it's not 
Uh, it's a retrospective planning application. There's two on the parking you have. Um, I don't want to, to uh, it's very important that the economy is doing well, but it's also very important that we preserve some sites. And I have one site in my division that started like that, and now um, it is a huge site, and they always fight. And it's also in the Welford, and, and um, uh, it's between Welford and uh, Master Trussell. And that site started exactly like that, and now uh, it's, it's huge. So I would like to refuse uh, that planning application on the ground that um, it's uh, according to Mr. Wayne, which must be, it must be his, um, he said it was against, now I put it, S10, I think. Do you want me to come back to you? Yes. Minutes? So um, I would like to... You can find your, your piece of paper and read yes. and we'll come back in a... That would be super. Yes. Councillor Richard. Uh, thank you, Chair. I mean, you know, given what this application is for, given where it is, um, I'm not going to lie in bed tonight worrying about it. I think we need a certain sense of perspective. But it does, I, you know, I find it unsatisfactory. But there is this big debate about how many, you know, what is the parking needed for? Um, is it the case that it has been used for overnight storage, and if that is the case, you know, is it is it really that important, um, or should we not just agree that that happens? There have been suggestions that the car parking is needed for some commercial activities that do not have planning uh, application, have planning approval, and if that's the case, I think that we actually ought to know. Um, can I, I, I say I, I, th I think we need to keep a sort of sense of perspective here. But the, the proposal from the parish council that we defer a decision and thus for more information on what are the what are the enterprises that are that are located in the site, how much parking do they each need? Would the applicant um, wish to apply for uh, for permission if permission is required for for, for storing things there overnight, and so on. I, 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 I just feel that there's something unsatisfactory about this, um, but it should be something, it should be a relatively simple application. Thank you. Have you found your piece of paper? Yes, my piece of paper uh, is against R2 and against uh, Welford, um, uh, this, no, Welford uh, neighborhood plan, WT10. And may maybe the officer can help me uh, if uh, there is other uh, reason uh, to uh, refuse. Uh, do you have a second there? No, nobody seconded your proposal, so I'm okay, but the proposal fails to know. Councillor Wesley, you wish to speak? Yeah, I just, I just want to sort of. <coughs> Yeah, I, thought, I thought this was a really, really simple one when I first read it. I thought, almost like Councillor Richard said, what's the problem? Why, why, is it, why is there an issue? But we've heard various things tonight, haven't we, about um, people asking for planning permission and about sort of having to prove the case. I mean, we were, we were sort of told, no, we can't say that we can't put forward a, uh, an objection because we actually haven't got the proof. And now what we've got is actually when you do think about it, we've got in front of us an application where there is no proof that anyone needs this car parking. It's just somebody says, I need car parking. And, um, and to a degree, yes, it is in the wrong place. And I think what we're all thinking is, well, it's miles away from anywhere. Who cares a little bit? I know that sounds a bit clear and quick, but um, that's where it is. And, I, and um, and I can sort of see what Councillor Irvin Swift is saying. I mean, once that is in place, then it's in place and it's, and it's there. I mean, I was thinking of our um, uh, task plan and grass creeks and specified materials on this and uh, whether it becomes a genuine car park. Um, I'm not sure whether that's, uh, whether that's a feasible option. But it just seems a little bit odd. But I don't see a great deal of opportunity to say no. Okay. Councillor James. 
Thank you, Jim. I, I too thought this was a very straightforward planning application. Uh, I wonder why we're going into these uh, difficulties here. Um, in the report, it says uh, amongst the letters of support uh, or issues of support, recent parking counts at various times of the day indicate between 22 and 32 cars. I wouldn't be a bit surprised by that as a nursery there, uh, let alone all the other staff that are on the site. So I would have thought that the requirement for a 40 car, 40 billion car park was quite justified on that particular side. But on the wider issues, uh, we do have to, uh, we have a duty to encourage uh, economic activity in the rural areas or economic development, uh, and this tips that particular box. And equally, we have a duty ensure uh, children's safety in particular, let alone other people. And this proposal here, the work that's been done, uh, does make it much safer for people who visit and leave the site. So as far as I'm concerned, it ticks the most important boxes. It really accords with most of our development policies. And I have no hesitation in recommending it for approval. Uh, uh, you do have a second. Councillor Dabbs, you wish to speak now, Councillor Yeah, well, the mention has been made about um, having the car park, the material of the car park, essentially. And can we put a condition in there that it needs to be, and I just throw the words out, environmentally suitable, but something permeable, that, that sort of thing, rather than a tarmac or, or concrete approach. I have no idea what... I'm just having that conversation, and if you wished, we could do a condition that the... Um, Surface treatment on the edge of the car park, but it could be subject to agreement by officers that that could be for something um, suitable to the location. Yeah. Central Park. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I find it hard to go against any of this, to be truthful. I think my gripe is always with this particular site. Everything's retrospective, nothing ever comes forward in the normal way. This is all retrospective. One's part retrospective, the other two are retrospective. And if I remember before, they were retrospective as I go back uh, a year or so. So it's always this side. It's as if this applicant doesn't understand that you have to actually go for planning permission to do these things, which I, I just found outstanding. The great thing is that there is a condition for where it says the car park area hereby permitted shall be used only for the parking of staff, customer and visitor vehicles and for no other purposes, including the external storage of any products or equipment. And I think that's really important from the, the photos we've seen and what's been discussed. I don't want this site miraculously to suddenly be caravan storage or things like that. So I also support the environmental aspects of the car parking as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Bowser. I'm sure you know that a retrospective planning application is, is uh, nothing wrong with it. Absolutely it's nothing. It's allowable. Absolutely. And it's not second class. All it is, it shouldn't get refused. There are two routes you can go down and either make it uh, a planning application <coughs> if it, uh, or, or, or action to remove it, perhaps. Anyway, yeah. Councillor Irving Swift, then we'll yes. just about. Yes, but I, I, I find it very amusing because uh, some councillors said, well, you know, I don't see any problem. But at the beginning of the meeting, we had in Dodford uh, a thing, and that was the same. It was starting and it became a brown side, <coughs> and suddenly we have houses. So that little parking, which is 40 car, in five years, or if it's not used, and if the buildings are not used, you can have your beautiful house. I remind you, it's a beautiful part of the country, and you have a private right. So that is why, you know, we have to be consistent. If we don't like one family application, and that I quite agree, I am not against uh, 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 businesses in open countryside, but as Councillor Parker said, it's a middle of nowhere. Our officer cannot check every development and so on. But for once, could we have, um, uh, I mean, 
we have, we are going, the bridal way has been blocked uh, without planning application, uh, a building was, uh, was uh, made. And so it's what upset everybody, and if that applicant could work with the neighbors, with the parish, everybody would be happier. And maybe we will have not a discussion with us on planning. So I am very uh, uh, unhappy that some people think 40 uh, car park uh, um, places in open countryside it's really not there and will not change their way of sleeping. If everybody does that, we will have no more countryside. Thank you. Thank you. And a quick one, Captain. Yeah, just quick one. Just to point out that we're not being uh, hypocrites at uh, this is, uh, comparing this application with uh, the one that, that we that petrol film station. It was a petrol film station when I was a kid. Uh, the one along the A45. We, Goodness knows what it was before then. So it's been there an awful long time. It didn't evolve us around the other side. That's what it always was. It was a cafe as yeah, well. Yeah, cafe, yeah. I used to use it and the petrol station. Whereas this is a little bit different. Hmm. Okay, we have a proposal. Chair, are yeah. we are we putting the materials? Sorry? Are we including the materials? Councillor Wesley has proposed an proposal willing to afford the proposal with the conditions regarding the materials, materials for landscaping. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that is included. We are proposed that the application be approved, including the conditions for the materials for the car park, wasn't it? No, that's yeah. Okay. Um, which has been seconded. All those in favour, please show. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those against? Abstentions? Three. The application is approved. And last but not least, I can see, I can see floor sitting in the back seat there. Um, application floor and it's zero four oh four five nine. Thank you, Chairman. Um site on the edge of the floor. The most significant thing about it probably is that it's within the conservation area, which does mean we have control over the trees on the site. I can't do anything unless they get out and seem to do it. Quite late in the day, when I was preparing the committee, I looked at the photos and I thought it was gosh, that tree was close to that, that outbuilding, as you'll see in a minute, it's kind of broken into the building of the bar. <laughs> um, anyway, the proposal is to get rid of this uh, tin shed, which is important to bits, and replace it with another important today, substantial building in terms of substantial, in terms of uh, stronger structure rather than larger, particularly. Um, so that you can see what what, what they're proposing you replace it with. Now, as I say, having, you know, having looked at the photograph and, and obviously conscious of the fact it's in the conservation area and the comments of the parish council, I to take the road that we want to keep all the trees on the site we can. So we don't want to, to do any harm to them. So we've spoken to the applicants um, this afternoon and we've said we slightly want to change our recommendation to say that there's a tree at the back of the we should go back. That's how close that tree is to the back of that building. It looks pretty close to me. Um, so they're going to demolish that tin building and then they're going to put another one in front of it. Now they say on the same footprint. I've spoken to Michael Benton, our landscape officer, and we agree that's too close. So what we're suggesting as an amendment is that you agree the advice which is now going to be amended to say that we want to get the proven and principle to allow that building to be taken down and replaced with another building. But we'll get Michael involved to go and look at the tree and we will negotiate with the applicants to that building being moved further forward away from the tree. It won't be on the exact same footprint. Mm -hmm. So that's our recommended, uh, recommended uh, revised position, should we say, on, on approval, that it is approved subject to the building being moved forward to so agree with the applicants to, in the interest of the tree to protect the tree. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I hope you're warm out there because we are up here. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have one speaker, Mrs. Garrison. You're from the project. Well, actually, I'll defer to my colleague. Your colleague will 
do just as well, I'm sure. Yeah. Colin, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm Catherine Baines, uh, representing Broadcast Council. Um, the permitted development rights introduced to make use of redundant farm buildings have strict limitations on what can be done to the building in order to make it habitable. It also requires that adjoining land remain in agricultural use. Clearly, what is not intended is to provide a way to circumvent the very strict limitations and demands for exceptional quality and innovation of paragraph 79 of the National Plan and Policy Framework, which may allow the construction of a dwelling in the countryside. Whilst the Royal Parish Council welcomed the chance to save the Dutch farm from further deterioration by its conversion to a dwelling, our concern here is that changing to residential use any adjoining land, as well as allowing the construction of a substantial ancillary building, which, um, as you've just been talking about, um, really needs to be built in keeping with the barn, which itself was a tin building and had to be kept um, that way. Um, it undermines the difference between permitted development and paragraph 79 provisions and becomes an opportunity to create residential land in open countryside, <laughs> despite the clear limitations imposed by the local and neighbourhood plans, potentially making all Daventry rural villages vulnerable. We believe that this may open the door to many more attempts to stretch the meaning of the permitted development provisions and expose more agricultural land to a change of use application. Therefore, on the basis that planning decision making is plan led, can you inform us now what are the DDC local plan policies that justify this recommendation? Thank you. Keith, you need to come back on that? Well, the first thing to say is obviously yes, well, class Q committee of open rights don't allow you to do large curtilages and outbuildings, etc. But of course, all that means is our community development. It doesn't stop you making a planning application to do it. And obviously, each planning application has to be dealt with on its merits. And looking at that the building there, um, it's obviously in need of some attention. And I think we, we honestly thought that well, replacing, it, replacing it wouldn't be a bad idea, really. So we're dealing with it on its, on its, on its merits, really. We're looking at that side. Well, do you know what? That, that looks a bit dangerous rather than this, yeah. but it looks a mess as well. And the proposal to replace it seemed reasonable to us. They originally, as I say, wanted to put it on the side footprint, so they're not, they're not kind of uh, moving it anywhere else. They've been on Eastern side, we want to use it in connection with the bar conversion as part of our garden, so we want to extend to the residential curse slightly. You can have regard to that on its merits. If you don't think it's harmful, fair enough, it doesn't seem to be a reason to, to not allow it. If you do think it's harmful, then fair enough, you can refuse it in terms of the reason as to why you think it's harmful. But I think our view is it's a visual improvement. We don't think extending the curse is going to do any harm, and we want, obviously, as I said at the beginning, we want those tree, those tree screen at the back of the time. As you can see from the other side, it's quite important that those trees are retained. So to that end, we're saying, well, we want the building moved away from the trees, really. So on that bit, yeah, there's the view from the other side, so you can see the trees, and uh, obviously the, bar, the actual bark conversion is hidden behind the trees. I mean, there's some more pictures from the other side as well. Mm -hmm. I thought there was another distant view of it in the field. Yeah, that one. So we still wanted to look like that, really, to be honest. Um, but obviously, what you can't see beyond that tree is a you know, ramshackle wall, tin ground building <laughs> falling down, and it will be replaced with a, a more substantial you know, new, new building. But hopefully, nothing's going to change it inside. It will all still be on the trees. That's what we're at for. So on that basis, I think we're really saying we can't see any harm in it. But you can disagree as you disagree with me and Dr. Well, members, there's no love for one here. Councillor Irving, sir. Well, um, I love uh, the way that our officer describes that as a building. <laughs> I call it a shag. <laughs> but um, uh, I, I agree. The, the, the thing is, as usual, is not what you propose is what you could do in the future, but uh, if uh, it is a building with a provision that the tree would be preserved, uh, I'm sure that would be acceptable by the officer's advice. 
So I propose that we go with official advice with a proviso that. Can I have a point of order interrupt you? I'm afraid you. Well, you're not addressing the change of use. That you're just on about the, the shed. There's you no not, mention of the change of use. You would normally not speak. I know. What's I your know. point? But I feel quite strong. Well, to be fair, Chairman, I did deal with that point. Obviously, if I focused and said I want to use it as I'm still a residential. Yeah, the change of agricultural land so, so that to would residential. Have, that would have to move. Yeah, the land that's built on Victoria there in the building. It would have to move residential. Yeah, but that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking about the change of use. Yeah, but that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking about the change of use. But we don't have a problem that says you can never change any piece of land to residential curtains, but you don't see the case on its merits, really. Um, we've got our plenty of garden extensions elsewhere. It's in a conservation area, though, so you can have a look up to that. And as I said, that right to the end, if you disagree with me, you can refuse it. It's good that everybody else is here, but we like it, Paul. Uh, right. Um, Councillor... Wait a minute. Wesley next, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, second the uh, uh, You're going to second it? Yeah, I second it. I, I understand the frustrations yeah. Yeah. of the parish council. We, I, I do understand the frustrations. I understand the issue. But I mean, it comes up all the time here. But that is that is the rule. That, that's how it is. And it, yes, there's minor. Yeah, there's a, change, there's a change of use here. But it's a conservation area. I think the work on the I think the work on the trees is an admirable addition to uh, to what's going on here. Um, at the end of the day, that is that's I mean, it's not even tantamount to a building, really, is it? But that can only be better in the long run. So I think you have to. I think they have to say yes. Thank you, Councillor Dad. Yeah, I was just wondering whether the uh, the officer could uh, give us some idea of how far away it's going to have to move from. The tree. Was it well, initially, initially we said um, the whole width of the building, but then we thought that might be a bit tight, so probably half at least. But I think what we need to do is get a Michael out of drink, most kind of person to go out there and have a look at it in closer detail and sight. And then well, presumably, in, in terms of the, the screen, it's yeah. still not going to be able to see it. Pushing it, yeah. Yeah, pushing it away from, from those trees at the back there. I mean, I mean, the purpose of moving it is so that. It doesn't damage the trees long term, and there's no. You know, well, so I said, the alarm bell rang for me when I was doing the pre, pre prep for committee, and I looked mm -hmm. at the photo and I saw that one taken from the back, and I thought, oh, that tree's mighty close there. Look, well, that tree's mighty close to that building. I'm not sure it's been plotted correctly on that plan, to be honest, but I'll see what I see there, and I thought, that is very close to that building. I don't think the replacement building should be going back that close to the tree. And I called Michael over because he just happened to be in the office and I said, do you agree? And he said, yeah, I did. So we went so from the applicants, I made the grieving principle that they will move the building away from the tree. And we've just got to negotiate how far now. So as far as needs to be done to protect the tree, really, it's in the short term. So like, exactly how far that will be, I don't know. But we talked, about, we talked about the whole width of the building, maybe, initially, but maybe that's a little bit too much. So, so we, to we are doing it. If the committee approve this, it will be then delegated to officers to make sure that distance is is, yeah. is okay. We're only talking about to keep out of the roots of the tree, to keep away from the tree. So you're only talking about uh, uh, you know a few feet. You're not talking about considerable distances. Okay. So you've got a proposal. The application be approved, which has been seconded. All those in favour, please show. <coughs> Ten. Those against? Mm -hmm. Abstention? The application is approved, giving officers delegated approval to have the exact position. To the exact position. Yeah. Okay? Thank you. That concludes the planning committee and thank you for attending.